Okay, g'day all, welcome to another video. So today I wanted to talk about some arithmetic instructions, basic arithmetic instructions in assembly. But as we'll see, there's uh, nuances to just about every instruction, even the simple ones that we're looking at today. So for today we're talking about uh, add, sub, ink, and deke. All right, the first instruction add is just used to add two operands together and store the result in the first. Um, that's pretty much all it does. It's used for signed and unsigned arithmetic, depending on how you read the flags. So you want to read the overflow flag if you want to check for signed carry, and you want to read the carry flag to check for unsigned carry. Uh, it also affects the sign and zero flags, and these other two, but who cares about those. Uh, lock is supported as well. Okay, so just a little bit of a demo. Uh, it's very, very easy. So we say like uh, add rax and rcx. Be mov rax5 and mov rcx12 with a colon in there, seven semicolon. It's a comma, bro. All right. Uh, okay, so rax has five, rcx has 12. And if we add them together, we get 17. Yeah, okay, so that's all hexadecimal. I hope that makes a bit of sense. If we had a watch, uh, there you go, 17. Okay, so you can't get much more simple than that. Just adds two things together. But there's a whole bunch of things that I wanted to go through with add. Um, using the original register set, this is a 32-bit registers and less. So 32-bit, 16-bit, and 8-bit registers. You'll often get um, an instruction that's a byte shorter than if you use, say, the 64-bit registers or if you use the new registers like R8B. Um, the same is true of the new 8 and 16 bit versions of the other registers. So like SIL uh, is new. Um, that's going to make your code longer. Um, what you really want to stick to is things like EAX, uh, CX, uh, BX, DX. Yeah. Uh, you might get faster instructions or smaller instructions. Um, you can use add, reg, and zero to update the flags according to a register without changing them. Yeah, that's pretty interesting, actually. Usually you'll see and reg, reg. So if someone wants to test if a register has zero in it, um, they'll use and and then the same register twice. But you can use add, register, and zero. Uh, if you use compare, you'll always get the zero flag set since compare actually does a sub behind the scenes. Um, and you're going to want add reg 1 if you're using ink, but you need the carry flag. So we'll have a look at that at the end. That's interesting, actually. Uh, add is faster than multiplication, so you might want to use add ax ax, for instance, to double ax. Usually you would use shifts. Sign extension. Okay, so this is really weird, but there is no add reg 64 and a 64-bit immediate value. Um, the closest thing we've got is add reg64 and an immediate 32-bit value. And the add instruction actually sign extends the 32-bit operand, which means that if you try this, you'll see something really weird. Let's just copy this over to here. Okay, so first of all, we'll zero our RCX uh, with a bit of XOR business. Could just mov there, but we'll zero it. And it might also go like um, dot data. So that we can add a watch, I'll add a little um, variable at the time. At the time. <laughs> My keyword var. Uh, it's an S keyword. And I'll set it to zero. This will all make sense in just a second. Wait a minute. I'm preparing something. I could have prepared this earlier. What are you... Okay, see if you set a watch on a register, it always shows it unsigned. Um, I set that variable so that we can have a signed watch. Mm, add watch. Okay, so my keyword is uh, zero. Um, RCX is also zero. But if we add a positive number to RCX, uh, even though that is a positive number, what we end up with is actually a negative value in RCX. It pasted the sign across the top of uh, RCX because it read that number there, 8 followed by heaps of zeros. It read that as a negative number, uh, even though it wasn't. Yeah, so the result is we actually get the ones complement of that stored in uh, RCX. 
which is you know it's probably not what we're after um, so if you do want to achieve a 64-bit add uh, with an immediate value then you actually have to break it up into two instructions so you also need an intermediate uh, mov into some temporary register uh, I believe mov is what the mov is one of the only instructions that I don't know what's happening here uh, mov is one of the only instructions that offers that's better A 64-bit immediate operand. Yeah, I don't think any of the other instructions do. So just watch that whenever you're using 64-bit um, immediate operands. Um, okay, so if we look at RCX after using our intermediate mov, we see that it was indeed a 64-bit mov, or at least that it didn't paste the sign bit across the entire top of the register. And we see that our keyword answer down here in the watch window is positive. Yeah, which is what we expected, really. If you add a positive number to zero, you shouldn't get negative. Okay, something to be aware of. All right, but the next instruction is sub. It's pretty much the same as add, the same caveats or nuances as before. Um, subtract subtracts the second uh, operand from the first and stores the result in the first. Uh, the overflow flag indicates assigned borrow and the carry flag indicates unsigned. Uh, it also affects the signs zero and these other two flags that no one cares about. Okay, so tricks. Similar to add, um, you've got to be careful of the way that sub will sign extend things. Once again, there's no sub 64-bit register and 64-bit immediate. It's going to sign extend that uh, immediate as if it was a 32-bit immediate, and um, that mightn't be what you want, so be careful. Uh, it's a quick way to zero things, sub reg reg, where this is the same operand, so sub ax ax for example, we'll do the same thing as xor ax ax, or mov ax zero. And you want to use sub x1 to achieve a deke x, which affects the carry flag, which I think is what we're going to have a look at next. Um, you can use add and sub to perform a swap, but just use exchange. Um, okay, so inc, inc is short for increment, and it's one of the simplest instructions, also one of the most common. Uh, just adds one to a value. So if we say something like uh, mov rax seven and inc rax, what we'll get is eight in rax. There you go, eight in rax. All right, but what you've got to be careful of is that uh, inc doesn't change the carry flag. So normally, if there's uh, an unsigned overflow, your carry flag would be set. So if we have something like um, we'll use al. something like that right so that's actually going to overflow AL um, AL is a byte it can't hold 256 so what we're going to get is um, these FF just here or 255 uh, overflow to zero there you go it overflowed but even though that was an unsigned overflow we don't get the carry flag with the ink instruction so the carry flag just here is zero still which is a bit weird. I think I think it's because the uh, ink instruction is used implicitly in the loop instruction but um, I'm not sure. So if you know uh, why ink and deke don't set the carry flag, maybe leave a comment below. That'll be good. <laughs> um, all right, but the recommendation, if you want to use ink, or you want to increment a register or value, and you want the carry flag to be set, then what you've got to do is uh, add AL and 1. Okay, so our AL overflowed, but this time, because we used add, we get the carry flag. Good stuff. Um, all right. Uh, ink is sometimes smaller than add reg one, but I mean, if you need that carry flag, then you're going to have to use add. It doesn't matter how small the instruction is. Um, okay, and much the same stuff goes for deek as well. So deek is the opposite of ink. Instead of adding one, it subtracts one from your operand. So used at the bottom of loops quite a lot. It affects the overflow sign and zero flags and the auxiliary uh, auxiliary carry and the parity flags, but just like ink, it doesn't affect the carry flag. So if we have um, mov al zero and deep al, just hit stop there. Hit a bit of a run again. Okay, all right. So we got zero zero in al. 
And at underflow to FF, we should get the carry flag, but just like Ink, Deke doesn't set the carry flag. Um, so if you want... Oh, we should do a demo of Deke just doing its normal thing. So Deking 6 will give you 5. I didn't do a demo of it. No, there you go. Yeah, it just subtracts 1. I already said. Um, Alright, so but if you want a Deke that does affect the carry flag, uh, then what you want is a sub AL and 1. Alright, so there's our overflow from 0, 0 to FF in hex, and there's our carry flag set to indicate that overflow. Strange, strange. Alright, but that's about all I wanted to say. So even these simple instructions just have weird, weird things about them. Things to be careful of, and interesting things, I think. It's, it's all these weird little things that, to me, make uh, x86 assembly language the funnest of them all. I mean, it's just, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. That's about all I wanted to say. So there's a few links. Uh, I'll try and put them on the screen here if I can figure out how. Uh, we've got a Patreon, a Facebook, and a music channel where I sing some songs uh, every now and again. Other than that, uh, I want you to have a really good day, and thanks for watching. <laughs> See ya.